So I just got done insulating my attic and here's what I did. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is air seal. And the reason that you wanna air seal is because fiberglass or blown in cellulose is not airtight. It will slow air down and kinda of act like an air filter, but air can definitely get through. If you have an existing house with insulation in the attic, it's a lot harder to do than if you have a new house because you're gonna to have to brush all the insulation out of the way to find all the spots that need air sealed. This includes any electrical boxes that are in the ceiling. You wanna completely encase those in foam. Any holes that are drilled in the top of walls for electrical wires to come up, you wanna shoot those filled with foam. Any can lights that are not IC rated, you wanna build a foam box around. Non IC rated means not rated for insulation contact. I created a separate video on this subject right up here or down in the video description. And then any IC rated can lights, you're gonna to wanna to cover with fiberglass. It's just the best practice to do. Fiberglass is more heat resistant than cellulose. And if you ever need to take the can light out for some reason from below, you're not gonna get a bunch of ground up newspaper falling on your head. With IC rated can lights, I also like to foam around the edge of the can light where it meets the drywall just to get a better air seal. So you're also going to want to check your attic ventilation to make sure you have enough. The general rule of thumb, at least in my area, is you want one square foot of open attic ventilation for every 150 square foot of attic that you have. So places you're going to want to check are your intake baffles, which are down at your eaves. And this is where your outside air comes in through your soffit to keep your attic cool. And then you're going to want to check your exhaust points, like your ridge vent, where your hot air goes out, can vents, which there used to be a can vent there, or your gable end vents. And if you have a lot of gable end vents like I do, you're gonna to wanna to put up splash guards like I have here to prevent any wind-driven rain from getting through the gable end vents and getting your insulation all wet. I actually made a separate video on this linked here or down in the video description. So as a quick side note, attic ventilation is very important because without it, your attic is gonna get extremely hot and it's gonna lower your energy bills and can lead to other issues like mold. So how it works is you have your outside air continually comes in through your eaves, heats up, and then it wants to go out, can vent or a ridge vent or a gable end vent. And with that air continually coming in, heating up and then rising, you're getting that continual flow through, coming in through the eaves, going out. And what that airflow does is it keeps your attic cool. So attic ventilation is important in the summer because it keeps your attic cooler. It's also important in the winter because it keeps your attic cooler. And by that I mean, if you don't have enough insulation here in your attic and you get a lot of heat loss, it's going to keep your attic warmer than the outside air and is going to melt anything that's on your roof. As it melts on your roof, the water runs down and when it hits your eaves, if it's really cold out, it's going to refreeze and it's going to form an ice dam. And so what ice dams do is they actually are going to hold water right there. As, as it comes down, it freezes. You got the buildup of ice right there and then it creates literally a dam that it's gonna trap the water that can get under your shingles and then leak into your house. So these are just a few reasons why attic ventilation and insulation are very important to have. If you need to do any electrical work, plumbing or HVAC, now is the time to do it as well before you blow in insulation. Now that all the prep work is done, you're ready to blow in cellulose. So the best thing to do is to go to a Home Depot or Lowe's, buy the insulation and put down a deposit on a machine and they'll let you rent the machine for free and they'll give you back the deposit if no damage to the machine has been done during the time that you had it. And depending on where you're located, you're gonna to wanna to blow in varying amounts of insulation. I'm located in Northern Indiana, so I went about an R49. Here's a picture of a chart that was on the insulation that I bought that kinda of goes over the subject.
Then once you bone in your insulation, you're almost done. The last thing to insulate is your attic access hatch. And I made this nifty door out of foam that seals airtight. And I also made a separate video for that, linked right here or down in the video description. So the last thing I'd like to touch on real quick is safety. When you're up here, you gotta be very careful walking around because if you misplace your foot, it's gonna go down through the ceiling and you could seriously hurt yourself. So be careful where you walk, you have to walk on framing. And the second thing is, make sure you wear a respirator, especially when you're blowing in the cellulose because there's a lot of airborne particulate that you're gonna be breathing in and it's gonna be very hazardous. And I'm not talking about the paper mask, I'm talking about the mask with heavy cartridges that is gonna be really good at filtering out all this particulate. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks.